Pastor Tyson Bibb, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, coming at you from, well, not my office, as I'm sure you notice. Uh, this is the Friday, which is really today, Saturday, looking forward to Sunday, so I guess it's looking forward to tomorrow video. Uh, but our devotion video for today is looking at the uh, readings in the one-year lectionary for tomorrow, the fifth Sunday after Trinity. So the first reading that we'll come across is the Old Testament reading. That's 1 Kings 19, verses 11 through 21. This is when the Lord speaks to Elijah. Now, a little greater context here. This is just after Elijah had his contest with the 450 prophets of Baal, uh, in which, well, Baal didn't show up because he's a false god, and the one true god did. Uh, and so um, Elijah has this big triumph, but then he flees. Uh, and so... Picking up in 1 Kings 19, 1, or rather verse 11, we hear this. Uh, and he, that is the Lord telling Elijah, said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire the sound of a low whisper, a still small voice, a thin silence, as the uh, study note in your ESV Bible will tell you. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And essentially, you know, the Lord is giving uh, Elijah a chance to repent because Elijah ran away from where he was called. Essentially, the Lord is saying, why are you here instead of where I called you to be doing what I called you to do? Uh, and Elijah's response is, Well, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And so the Lord says to him, Go, return your way. And then he receives more instructions following that. Uh, essentially that the Lord is saying, I've got this, you're okay. Uh, and he assures him, yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed down to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So the Lord promises to preserve a faithful remnant of his people, despite all the chaos and calamity that Elijah has experienced. Uh, and so it's interesting to note here, because the Old Testament and Gospel lessons are always kind of paired together. Uh, there's a theme that comes through there. And so in the Old Testament lesson, we see that the Lord was not in these big, spectacular signs and wonders and terrifying things that Elijah saw before him. The, the, you know, the mountains broke into pieces, the wind was there, there's an earthquake, a fire, the Lord wasn't in any of those things. Rather, he was in a still, small voice, a still, small whisper. Uh, and so then, as we proceed through the readings for tomorrow... Um, We'll get, uh, we come to 1 Peter 3, verses 8 through 15, and you'll probably get more about this reading on Monday uh, for the extras from Sunday because uh, this, this epistle reading doesn't tie in quite as tightly or as closely with the Old Testament and Gospel, uh, but it's still, of course, a wonderful reading. Um, so St. Peter here, I'll just give you the last few verses of this reading. As I said, I'll give you more for it on Monday. But uh, 1 Peter 3, verses 13 through 15 we hear this now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake you will be blessed have no fear of them nor be troubled saint peter talking about the uh, unbelievers persecuting the church but in your hearts honor christ the lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you yet do it with gentleness and respect and that word defense uh, is the Greek word apologia, uh, and so uh, we'll get a little bit more of that on Monday. Um, and that's not an apology for the gospel. I says, I'm so sorry I believe in Jesus as my Savior. Not in the least, no. Uh, apologia is a defense, uh, a defense uh, for anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. Um, we'll get more to that on, uh, on Monday uh, as we look at... Um, uh, that reading a little closer. But the gospel reading for tomorrow, for uh, Sunday, the fifth Sunday after Trinity, Luke 5, verses 1 through 11, uh, where Jesus calls his first disciples. Now we hear this. 
On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he, that is Jesus, was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and they were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he, that again, that's Jesus, asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And all, so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid, for from now on you'll be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. So we have here this miraculous catch of fish. Uh, but again, remember, the Old Testament and Gospel pair up, and there's a central thing going on here. Uh, notice um, you know, Peter tells Jesus, Master, we, we toiled all night, we didn't take a thing. They didn't catch a thing all night long. These are professional fishermen. This is what they do, right? And they got skunked. Uh, happens to the best of us. But here's the deal. Uh, Jesus comes along, and, and this is all for a purpose, uh, because then Jesus tells them, we'll put out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. Uh, and then they catch this miraculous catch of fish. A catch of fish so large they need both boats to be there to help them bring it in, and even then the boats are sinking under the weight uh, of this catch. Uh, so uh, an enormous, miraculous catch of fish. And this was all at what? At the word of Jesus. Uh, and so they didn't catch this, uh, the, this great catch of fish with their ingenuity, their expertise, uh, their, you know, um, amazing skill as fishermen. Rather, it was at the word of the Lord that they catch these fish. And what unlocks all this, to help us understand it, are these words of Jesus. He said, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men. This is about uh, people being brought into the church. Uh, now, to, to look at this kind of allegorically and symbolically a little bit, which I think we're just fine to do here, um, Jesus is telling them that the way in which people are going to be brought into the church, it's not with your ingenuity. Master, we toiled all night and we took nothing. It's not with your ingenuity. It's not with your charisma. It's not your great personality. It's not your great looks. Uh, none of that. Uh, rather, people are brought into the church by the still small voice, thinking back to our first Kings reading, uh, at the word of Jesus. They're called by the gospel. The Holy Spirit calls people by the gospel, enlightens them uh, with his gifts, and sanctifies and keeps them in the true faith, brings them into the Holy Christian Church. It's this preaching of the cross, the preaching of Christ crucified and resurrected for sinners. That is the preaching. That's the message that the Lord uses uh, to bring people into his church. Uh, it's not some fancy mission statement, vision statement, purpose statement, passion statement, statement, statement. That's not what's going to bring people into the church. Uh, we try to organize ourselves around things, but really, what do we need? We need the Word of God purely preached and taught, the sacraments of Christ rightly given. That is uh, what the church is founded on. The marks of the church are the gospel purely preached and taught, the sacraments rightly given according to the Word of God. Those are the things with the, which the Lord himself has chosen uh, to be which, uh, that which he builds his church with. Uh, and that which uh, gives and sustains saving faith, right? These means of grace, God's word and sacraments. And so uh, a lot going on here in the readings. Uh, this is just kind of a little bit of a devotion to what your appetite for what's coming tomorrow. Uh, most of the sermon is going to end up focusing uh, more on the Old Testament reading, but, but this theme of the word of God gets pulled through um, uh, the Word of God being that which is most necessary, by the way, uh, gets pulled through in, in the sermon from both the Old Testament and Gospel readings. So the Lord's blessings on the rest of your weekend here. Um, uh, not used to seeing me in casual form here at home and in the uh, the family room, but nonetheless, uh, this is our devotion for um, Friday, which is really now Saturday. Looking forward to tomorrow, that is Sunday. The Lord's peace be with you.